stuff a lot. You'll say stuff in things. You're listening to Rod and Style Radio, the latest in, podcast brought to you by RodandStyle.com, which is where you can find yeah. links for <laughs> merch, <laughs> videos from our YouTube After channel, this, along uh, with stories and tech talk from some of the greatest folks in the culture. Right. So oh, grab oh, the wheel, it's not. about to get wild. <laughs> you know, You've tuned just, into you know, Rod and Style. Stuff in everything. Stuff in everything. I do say first of all. First of all, it's all right. It, it works really well with whatever you're talking about. I think if it's the third thing that you brought up. Third of all? First of all, <laughs> first of all Lane, watch how you talk to me. Second of all, <laughs> drink can your we, pickle juice. Can we have Chuck do the uh, intro and he'll do? He'll start with first of all? Yes, yes. exactly. First of all, the custom you're, couple. You're listening to Ron yeah. Star Radio with the custom couple. Yeah. With special guest Scratch, hello, and myself, Chuck, on Scratch's date of birth, five twenty six seventy two. He's fifty. That's right. I'm fifty this this year. That's a half a century. You know that. I'm a half of a hundred years old. So uh, you're half a isky. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, Lane, That's Sam, uh, thank you so much for coming out here and hanging out with us at the, at the shop, you know, uh, I appreciate it. I know that y'all are on your way to uh, a different show right now. Yeah, no, I absolutely thank you because this gave us a reason to get off the highway for a bit <laughs> and relax and be able to come up here, hang out with you on your birthday. Right on. So, yeah, no, uh, we're headed to Beatersville. So that's in, how do you say it, Chuck? Lowell. Like Kentucky. And, uh, it was on a He's like, yeah, we're going to Louisville. I was like, Whoa. Don't, don't, don't say don't, it like that. Don't say it like that. They'll pick you out of a crowd real quick. Right. Um, but yeah, we'll be up there for the weekend. And uh, their show is actually on Sunday. So it actually gives us time to uh, not have to drive like wild people are trying to get into you know a 16 hour drive right now. So right on. absolutely. Thank you for having us in the shop. Last time we were here was what, back in November? Yeah, I think so. Yep. After the Pistons and Paint show, came oh. over here and hung out for a little bit. And uh shop looks uh, a little different now. Yeah, a little pack. We have uh, a lot of uh, cheaters like uh, culture stuff in. And then we have all our speed and culture magazine wear in and all that. And I'm pretty stoked. Chuck is going to be in the office a lot more. And then we could have uh, apparel and be setting. Uh, selling it, you know, Tuesday through Saturday or whatever. And then I'll be out in the shop working. And that's, yeah, it absolutely looks awesome. Of course, if y'all ever make a trip down this direction uh, into Fort Worth, you can take a wonderful picture with your face that says, uh, your face is a rat rod. Yeah. So exactly. You know, find that, that on the, on the uh, social media. Right. So <laughs> that uh, term, your face is a rat rod came up with my, me and my buddy Piero from Matt Fabricators. Mm -hmm. uh, we were talking about something. He's like, oh, yeah, that's a rat rod, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, your face is a rat rod. And we just started laughing and laughing and laughing because <laughs> it's like the most ridiculous shit you can say, right? And then it just turned into like a T-shirt, a sticker, this and that. And then now it's the stand up. You stick your face in it and then you take a picture of it. Yeah, so you can uh, tag yourself at Scratch's Garage. Yeah, I just learned something new today that you and Piero came up with that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I didn't know that. We were laughing so fucking hard. Yeah, that's so funny. good. I could see I could see Piero laughing hard at that. So yeah. coming soon to you, Instagram will have Lane and Sama in that little rat rod mm -hmm. cut yeah. out. You'll, yeah, yeah, you'll be able to find the hash. <laughs> it's a rat. It's a rat. It's a yeah. Big old rat. Yeah. Well, that goes with your name. You used to be known as Rat Lane. Rat Lane. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that was not, in the music days, though. Oh, okay, good. Not rat rod days. No, no, no. absolutely not. Uh, I've owned a couple, and no. uh, I don't anymore. No. <laughs> There's a reason for that. <laughs> Let's edit that shit right out. <laughs> beep. Every time the word rat rod said beep, right? It's a <laughs> rat rod beep. Yeah, that's the only thing that we censor out of this. So, but we have we have a lot of stuff going on right now. Uh, you know, Chuck moved to Texas. So, uh, it's full-time Chuck and Scratch show, basically. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we're just Chuck and Scratch show. <laughs> it's pretty true. I mean, like, we're coming up with some pretty dumb shit to do, like, all day long. Chuck's got about 20-something 
Model T's in his backyard. So we're constantly like, oh, what if we build this car for this, build this car for that? And, uh, you know, we have, I don't know how many shows going on right now. We have the pre-war pileup up in Oklahoma Mm -hmm. with Chadillac. And then we have the Wisconsin show, uh, Motor Mania, Mm -hmm. Chuck and I, and Custom Call It. We'll be t- She's gonna hate that stuff. <laughs> we'll be we'll be taking care of that uh the hall there, which is called the Automotive Hall of Enchantment. <laughs> which is supposed to be like this really early sixties, like late fifties vibe. Uh this year it won't be so much, but next year when we take over that twenty five hundred square feet or twenty five thousand square feet, it will be like Pretty amazing. I want to put like Starburst uh, lights in there and low lighting and have you guys out there and be doing interviews mm-hmm. with custom car builders and uh, painters and all the people that are involved in the shows and events, you know, and that's the way it's supposed to be. You know, we're, we're supposed to be promoting different shows, even though if we're not involved or not, but, you know, it, it, hot riding is a small community. Don't piss off. It is. Don't piss off your neighbors. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> and um, so we have that going on. And then uh, Chuck, you know, has a bunch of car builds going on right now. He has one yep. in Vegas. Uh, he's going to go to Canada. Yeah, I'll be flying out after July 4th sometime back out to California, getting together with Don. Uh, Don's finishing up a 32 Roadster right now. We're going to take his 32 Roadster and I want to say it's 57 Ford wagon. And we're going to leave Richards, California. We're going to go up to uh, uh, Portland, Oregon. Probably Hang up. Some... Is that loud? <laughs> we're going to go be. up to Portland, Oregon. Uh, meet up with some guys. Go up to Washington. Meet some other friends and everything else. Uh, get together with my buddy Mike uh, from uh, Rainy Days Brewing Company. Uh, he's, he has a beer being released, uh, that we're kind of working on together called here to party Pilsner. Uh, so it should be a good time. We're going to release that and then drive up to Canada to the Deuce Day show and then come back down. So not everybody knows who Don is. Who is Don? It's Don, the will man Waldron, according to Iski. Okay. Oh, Don Waldron, he owned Rod's West, uh, hot rod shop forever. Uh, it actually issued five speed and cultures on the cover with, uh, Hugh Tucker, uh, both with double A street roasters. So for anybody that doesn't know what a double A street roaster is, most people would say it's a model A roaster gasser, but it's a double A street roaster. Uh, I got yelled at about that a lot from Don. Right. So, so, <laughs> so Don is a well-known guy that would, you would see on like, uh, uh David Freiberger show, the, yep. uh, roadkill show and, and different things. Cause they would, he has a plethora of vintage wheels yep. that are hard to find, you know, magnesium wheels and aluminum wheels from that era. And yeah, actually, uh, blas- uh, they're blasphemy. He, they got the wheels for blasphemy off of Don. Which oh, is wow. a famous, yeah. famous caster car. Yeah. That, uh, they needed Finnegan very does. specific wheels, so they went up the Ridgecrest and saw Don to get those wheels off of him. Don, Don's a real guy. Yeah. You know? he's, he's been, been doing this he, stuff from the 50s, you know? Yeah. And he's got perfect hair all the time. Don Walter, great hair, don't care. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> yeah, it's on the the, the joke on the today is though so, that I'm the only one in the shop that did not get a freaking haircut this week. So yeah. I'm a little upset about this. Lane, oh, Lane, not, not great hair. Not great hair. We all care. We all care. Everybody <laughs> is caring at this point. Yeah. Have you ever seen Lane's hair in the past? He's got fucking great hair. I, I don't know. normally wear a hat. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's got good hair. You know, it's got good. You see my hair in the past. <laughs> I got, get, on. I, had, I got a haircut for the first time since November. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, that's why we get to hang out with the custom couple because they have good style, not because they have bad style. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that that's what uh, that's what got us into the resume to be even submitted, right? Yeah, that's what I think, you know. It's like, <laughs> Do you have good style? Of, yes. Well, I mean, like right. anybody can be funny on radio, you know what I mean? But when you're at an event, and you're like, oh, that's that's that person. Oh, well, <laughs> like, you know. But y'all have good style. Y'all have like, you know, you're up there, you're doing your thing, you know. Yeah, there's a few folks that are doing uh doing podcasts where you're like, Yeah, it makes sense that you're doing a podcast because I wouldn't put you on TV one bit. Right, right. 
Yeah. If we ever had, if we ever own our own television channel, for sure, it'll be like a custom couple of TV productions. You know, it's like we'll be doing that. Oh, you absolutely. Know? Yeah. Sam will be all over it though. Yeah. 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 I'll still be behind the camera. <laughs> yeah, <we're laughs> right. Just fix it a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, no, right. then everyone will learn the big secret that I do your hair. That yeah, that Sam it's so well, hair. you know, it's out there now. It is. It is. Good Good job. He used oh. to have an elephant trunk, and I used to do that all the time. I do it every day for him. The, the waterfall. Oh, okay, I didn't know what elephant trunk meant. I thought we were going down a different no, road no, no, no. real quick. <laughs> I used to do his elephant trunk. <laughs> That's for him. <laughs> I'm glad. That's uh, good to know. All right. So, yeah. what's an elephant trunk? <laughs> the the waterfall hairstyle. I and, call it an elephant. So, you know, Elvis had that piece of hair that would fall down. Oh, and then like a little swoopy doo dah. Yeah, yeah. There you uh, go. What is that? That's <laughs> uh, uh, the other rock, the rock and the uh, rockabilly guy, Vince. Uh, I'm really, you should know this. I should. I've been drinking. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> We're driving, right? I mean, right, right, I'm right. not driving. Yeah. No, I am. <laughs> but, um, Dick. Well, you guys are staying at my house tonight, so it's yeah. awesome. There you go. Yeah, that doesn't matter. But Folks, anyways, you're going to drink and drive. Don't do it. Yeah, don't do it. It's Uber's way cheaper. Um, but I don't know. It, it's it's I'm I'm super stoked on what we have going on in the next like six months. We're going to just like kill it. We have a lot of. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, there we go. That's yeah. that's an elephant trunk. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Folks, okay. if you uh, remain. Go check out Sama's social media. She'll yeah, have yeah. pictures of my elephant trunk on there if you're yeah. interested. Yeah. I don't know if they want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, Chuck moving back to Texas is epic for one. And you said that he's got like a hundred different projects of teas going on. Yeah. Now you're building one for the pileup, aren't you? Yeah, we're building uh, for the pre-war pileup. I have, uh, it's a 26 T that's been narrowed uh, 12 inches. Uh, it's sitting on Model A frame. It's been narrowed. Uh, it's a Oldsmobile motor, 303 Olds motor with an early, early Engel cam, uh, different heads. I'm building the intake and the exhaust for it. We have a truck transmission and then a, a truck rear end, a banjo rear end. My buddy, my good buddy, Neil Reamer, who's uh, a badass fabricator and uh, suspension guy. He's he actually just came over here one day. He's like, I'm just taking that frame with me. I'm just I'm just doing it. Like you're uh I have these all these ideas. I just gotta do it. And like he just like took over the project. I'm like, all right, Neil, uh I don't know what to say. You weigh like a hundred pounds more than me. You can do whatever you want right now. Like, <laughs> just take what you want and leave. <laughs> with a serpent on his tattooed on his head. Right, right. Like I I've known Neil since he was like in his early twenties or whatever. And he was just like this, like kind of coy, like nice guy. Like I knew that he welded and this and stuff, but now he's like a monster of like a fabricator. And, you know, he's worked on all kinds of different things. He's worked for, uh, he was on monster garage and, you know, and stuff like that. Like he's, he's a real guy. Yeah, right and, now he does a lot of, he builds a lot of cars that do like, uh, uh the, dirt. Uh, or the desert racing and stuff like that, like King of Hammers and oh, stuff. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah he built those frames and stuff. Two yeah. cars for King of Hammers now, yeah. but he worked for Infamous for years and years, and that's a, a company that would build uh, trucks that were brand new trucks, like a brand new off the show room floor truck. They'd take it straight over there, and then they would figure out how to put it as low as possible, like brand new diesel dually. On the ground, laying rocker. Wow, yeah. that's opposite of what most people in Texas are doing with a dually, though. Yeah, oh, yeah, Is it yeah, right? yeah, 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 for sure. So well, yeah, it's, throw it's that way... thing on the ground. That's a that's going backwards in engineering for sure. Yeah. So he he's a great fabricator. Good. That's guy. awesome. Super nice dude. We should get him on the podcast. Matter of fact, yeah. Well, yeah. he did that. Uh, the shoe box that's in the shop. Have you seen a shoebox in a shop? That's yeah, laid on the back. He did the suspension and the rear that. suspension on that. Yeah. What are the the tail lights going into that shoebox? I was going to ask you earlier. So it'll be fifty four uh, Ford tail lights in the back of the shoebox. I just need to center them up. The things that were on there before were a little wacky. Uh, Chris Spence, I uh, bought the buckets that he makes. Super nice guy. He's out there in uh, California, Northern California. And I'll just rebuild the the wind spear that goes inside of the car and 
put those in there and then it'll be an Oldsmobile Telite, but I'll remake the um the there's like a chrome that goes around the edge of the telite and it'll match the Lincoln te- uh, headlight bezels. So it always has to be like complement and repeat, you know, mm-hmm. when you go to, you know, automotive design school, you learn these things. So it's like, it's a little bit different. <laughs> just, you know, oh yeah, I just want to do this. Oh, okay. Nice. Good job. <laughs> you know, <laughs> good job. So tell me a little bit, how did y'all get onto motor mania? Like what prompted that? So, uh, there's this girl, her name is Colette. She lives in Illinois. She has been, been building a Kaiser for a while. Um, and she's like, I just want to do custom car stuff. I see that you and Chuck are doing a lot of custom car stuff. Can I be a part of that? And mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, sure. What do you think? And she's like, I know this guy, he's a promoter and he is building a custom car Galleria. And is there any part you would like, is there any way y'all would like to be a part of it? And I was like, man, I'm super interested. I talked to Chuck. Chuck's like, that sounds awesome. Let's talk to the guy. We talked to John. John was super pumped. And I was like, I want to do this and everything. But Colette, you're like, you're the person. We're, you're our go-to person. And she's like, oh, shit. I was like, yeah. <laughs> well, at that point, I just started calling her custom Colette. I don't give a shit if she likes it or not. And that's going to be it. Is it with um, K's or C's? Oh, it's going to be with K's. All right. So custom call at with, this, with, with both K. with K's. <laughs> okay. And uh, I like it. So we got hooked up doing this thing. That's it, Colette. And, and it's pretty awesome. Like, we're going to take over the whole 25,000 square foot um, room. We'll do that. And, you know, right now she has like about 15 cars lined up yeah. uh, between the me and Chuck. We, I don't know how many, maybe another 15. So that's yeah. like 30 cars. Mm-hmm. I think the show, I think that room will hold a, th- a throw, hold a maybe a hundred. Mm-hmm. So, um, man, we just got to get on it between now and the 24th or whatever. But so, are there any like, um, like specific things you're looking for? Does anybody like how does someone even? Well, 67 and earlier. Mm-hmm custom car hot rod race car okay you know because we're we're into gas gassers and going fast yeah. and willies and shit you know <laughs> like why why wouldn't we be right but uh muscle cars not so much no i would be into totally into if it was like a stock or stock stock muscle car you know what i mean yeah like, i'm into that that's like a big deal for me but um those types of cars, custom cars and hot rods are from those eras, you know, it's like, that's it, you know, and then we can make the show grow. And then next year, this year, we're trying to get you out there. We want y'all out there, but next year we're for sure going to have you out there and then have your own little booth set up. We'll, we'll be like, Hey, we have to direct you straight to these guys. <laughs> the custom couple are here. We went in, we need to get an interview with you guys, you know, and then Chuck has a, a a handful of friends that are in Sega. Those guys are good guys. Yeah. Like the Southeast Gasser Association. Yeah. That's one of the reasons me and Scratch talked and uh, specifically picking 67. Because mm-hmm. that's where, that's the Southeast Gasser Association. That's their cutoff. Oh, okay. It's 1967. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the things that we talked about with that. Because a lot of times, a lot of shows are like 64 earlier and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But for the racing aspect, like yeah. 67 was kind of that, that end. You know, uh, like because of the motors and everything else that were involved. 64 or 64 is a cutoff normally because 64 is when uh, production muscle cars came out. Mm-hmm. So it's like you don't really want a bunch of muscle cars like Chevelle's and 72, whatever. And then then it's kind of like gets a little weird in 74. Yeah. So you don't really want any of that stuff in your in your show when you're trying to like do doo-wop and hang out and like starburst <laughs> and like we're trying to get a feel for the show yeah. you know it's like my mustang yeah no <laughs> no mustangs yeah that's the whole other thing it's like yeah. you don't want a bunch of mustang dudes up there have you met any mustang guys nope nope i'd like to keep it that <laughs> way that's why we put on the flyer n o <laughs> that's why i put a flyer pre-67 yeah. you know, hot rods customs race cars race cars yeah. you know gassers and 
So yeah. it kind of just does that cut off of not just year wise, but also the styling of yeah. the car. Have you ever seen any of that stuff from Sega that they're doing the Southeast gas gassers or the YouTube channel and all that? It's it's blowing up. It's insane. It's mm -hmm. Like my nephew races with those guys, and then uh, Chuck's been friends with uh, Steve and Clayne for years. And yep. Old hillbillies over here. You can't you know you can't separate That's them. Rude. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not wrong, but it's still just kind of rude. Not a statement, but a fact. Well, Quain, right? Quain stock. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that in a loving manner here. Well, thank you. I appreciate. All that. right, great. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> McQueen Stott, who runs Southeast Gas Association, he actually ran for NHRA for years and years. And then when he left, he started the Southeast Gas Association and wanted to do that. So uh, so it would be a terrible idea to have him on the show. <laughs> Quain, if you're listening, I love you. Quain loves to talk a lot. Uh, <laughs> it's just like, well, just like when you content. interview Gerald. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. a thing about hillbillies. When hill Some hillbillies, when they start talking, Three and a half hours later, <laughs> they're still talking. We love you, Gerald. Gerald was a fun interview. Oh, I, I got really to I got to give it to y'all for for setting that up for us because he was so fun to talk with. And then even after the recording was done, we talked with him for another forty five minutes. And and then his wife actually came in. We oh, could cool. hear her in the back. She's like, "What like, happened to forty five yeah. minutes? It was forty five minutes ago." <laughs> you could almost hear her tapping her watch. Like, <laughs> Yeah, it was great. What's been your guys' favorite interview so far? Favorite interview? Um, or like the last, let's say, since you guys have been doing the Rod and Stop. Since you met us, yeah. yeah. Tid Besides us, of course. Tidwell. Still Tidwell. Tidwell is a good I one. I love talking to him. He's so fucking crazy. Like, yeah. I just love how crazy he is. He is I just don't like that he called me Peaches. <laughs> yeah, hi, Peaches. He's He's such an artist. <laughs> What's that? He's such an artist. Oh. Oh, oh yeah. amazing we and then the following week we had a, a friend of ours that just reached out to us because he heard the episode with tidwell that yeah. he was like hey i've followed him for a bunch of years and yeah. like when we had him on the show it turned out you know he'd been following tidwell for like mm -hmm. several we'll get years to see like, him when we go up like, to Beatersville. Just, oh yeah that's yeah. awesome yeah Tidwell's so awesome. yeah that was a that's excellent where my interview. sticker packs are at yeah uh, still waiting yeah. on those I'm sticker packs gerald I yeah, did an interview with somebody else oh, yeah. that uh, was really phenomenal. Also, um, man, it was it was. Uh, who have y'all done? And was well, the opportunity to to interview Ian Russell was oh, wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. yeah. to be you know <laughs> on you know, to be talking with him, and then he, you know he just talks to you like he's known you forever. Yeah. Like you're a friend right off the bat. Yeah. And then, like, to be invited out to the desert, you know, you know, hey, come out, hang out in the shop with us. It's like, you know, when we came on with with Rod and Style Radio and, and we have started down this endeavor, like, that's just opened so many of, like, the coolest doors you can think of. Um, Adam one? was another really good one for me. Hot Rod Kid. Oh, Hot Rod Kid. That that kid is doing some wonderful things. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, man, what's his real name? I can never remember his real name. It doesn't matter. Noah. Noah. Yeah. Noah's a good dude. Yeah. He's up in McMinnville, Oregon. He's actually got his own little podcast, Hot Rod Kids. The Hot yeah, Rod Kids. Yeah. yeah. He's telling us about he's, it. It's, it's making the first time I talked to him. I mean, that kid's like, he's like, yeah. I'm um, like, he was like, at the time when I first taught him, I think he was like 19. He's like, I'm 19. I'm in the Army Guard, National Guard. I build these old school hot rods. He's cool. like, he's like, Zach. But on the Pacific Northwest, right? You know, and just a lot younger, you know. And it was great to talk to him because, and I, I still like I've I've seen him at di all these different shows, and I still haven't got to sit down and talk to him because uh, every time I go up through there, it's like, hey man, I'm in the air, uh, like near Port because McMinnville's outside. It's like kind of a a ways out of Portland, mm -hmm. you know. So when you when I drive north, I was run right through the middle of Portland. Every time I try to plan go out there, he, like he's either gone or the timing never lines up. I think this actually that's what I need to do. Let's go to that next time and go sit and talk with him. He's a good kid. Yeah, yeah, he's, that's he's what cool. that's what happened with he's, us. He's learned a lot a, about metal fab and stuff. He's he's really ta he's a talent, especially for his age. Extremely mm -hmm. talented. Nice, like he's a good dude. You know, we we took our uh, recently we took the vacation up to New York. Yeah, and yeah. you know that was like not car related whatsoever. We just wanted to go and and see New York. 
And uh, that happened to us where, you know, we interviewed Brian Newman and become good friends with what? him. And, he and wasn't then there. he's in Vegas <laughs> the weekend we're in New York. Yeah. Yeah, he was doing his business. So, I, 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 I knew that y'all interviewed him and I was like, what? Y'all did it at live? I didn't know. No, then, I uh, wish we had. Oh, man. Him it, and Angie. It, so eventually... Awesome. That that'll be in the in the works because we've already made the plans that we're gonna go see one of his shows. Yeah. We're gonna go and get to hang out with we him. We have at some to do point. that. We have to do it as a group. Yeah, that, that'd be mm-hmm. wonderful. So I yeah, said, but yeah, we we go to New York. Or, uh, Charlie Crockett is this uh, one weekend, the same weekend in Vegas is yeah, as Brian. That's like July tenth or something, I think. Last July. It's when your sister's 7th. birthday, or something like that. My sister's birthday. It's her weekend. Yeah, that's when Brian's going to be back in Vegas. Oh, uh, I know. I fucking told her she was going to see him. <laughs> <You> all angry. <laughs> I fucking yeah, Brian, yeah. Brian's just calm. <laughs> Semi- <laughs> we have nothing to do with it. <laughs> well, Brian, Brian's just a great dude because it's like, he's like, you know, a, a Grammy tr- winner. You know, he's he's played with like, you know, Lady Gaga, Tony Bennett, like all oh, these God, phenomenal yeah. artists and, and everything yeah. else. And he's just like, you, he talks to you. He's like, hey, bro, what's up? You know, yeah. and then he's yelling at you the whole time. He acts, he, acts like, <laughs> you know? he acts like he he did he not act like he'd just known y'all forever? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. 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 That was another one where we sat on an interview and we just talked like old friends. And then, you know, we're about to finish. Like we're finishing up everything, you know, giving the sign offs and all that. And he pops off with this uh Christopher Walken oh, yeah. <laughs> impersonation. And I was like, oh, we gotta that. re-record all of that, please. <laughs> he tries, he's fine. Oh, Dude, he he's hilarious. hilarious. He's one of my favorite people. So I started following him years ago. I man, long, long time ago. Like over 10 years ago. And he had that old I'm an Oldsmobile guy, right? So he had an Oldsmobile, a green Oldsmobile on bags. And I was like, hey man, I love your car. I'm just going to say that. He's like, man, who are you? Whatever. <laughs> and it comes back to me a couple of months later. It's like, oh, shit. I know exactly who you are. Like, you're on, like, these shows or whatever. And I was like, yeah, man, I don't I don't really care. Like, I, I mean, that's just work. But that's a really good looking car. And he's like, oh, wow. Thanks, man. And, like, then we just became friends. It's yeah. like back and forth, chatting back and forth. Because, you know. It's cool that I'm on all these shows and I'm doing my thing, but it's just like him going to Vegas and working with all these people. It's work, man. We're yeah. just working. Mm-hmm. Like we're doing our thing. And, you know, it's like Lane is a badass guy that works building fucking aircraft. Like that's just work. You know, exactly. it's like this shit is the fun shit. We're, <laughs> we're, I just have the opportunity to do fun shit at work. Yep. You know what I mean? And like, I think that that's where we're all trying to get, you know, it's like building cars and interviewing people and having y'all come out. I mean, I would love for when we're building a car, just have y'all come out and be like, oh shit, look, this is what we're doing. You know, like these guys are building these cars, this and that, like they kind of, uh, those junk they're putting together. Huh? No, that's no. not what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't. You know, because eventually... Tourette's is fucking a little out of control right now. <laughs> just say it. But uh, anyways, you know, it's just it'd be good to have oh, like we need. <laughs> <laughs> we need like we need our we need our uh, you know like Howard Cosell you know like yeah. oh shit like this is what's going on you know like and it's great because y'all are such a good team. And y'all live together and everything else. So y'all know how to like, you know, make each other mad and make each other happy at the same time. You know, it's like, you know, Sam could say something and then, then you can like get a little mad and say something funny. Well, become a marriage you know? like, <laughs> yeah, no, you know, no, we'll, like, we'll take this straight back to when MTV stopped playing music videos and did only reality TV. Uh, yeah, December yeah. 12th, 1998. <laughs> 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 he knows the date. Right. Yeah. They ruined TV. I mean, ruined, ruined, ruined. video kills the radio videos. star. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> You've heard it here, folks. You know what's really wild is like the uh, the degrees of separation like that people have. Like, you know, you probably, you know, you've heard it before where you know somebody who knows somebody else, right. that, you know, and there's so many that you can go where it gets back to you, right? 
one thing that came up in uh, in Brian's interview was that his friend that's helping him like work on cars and shit is his friend Russ. Russ was on my podcast back when I had the Russ Culture Project. Okay. Like randomly, he he was in a, a band and building cars up in the you know on the East Coast. I had him on the show. I didn't know who he was. We just talked on a, so on a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. And then years later, Brian's talking about him. He's like, yeah, yeah, he works for Rob Ida. And I was like, oh, shit. I know Russ and I know <laughs> Rob. That's, that's Rob freaking Ida's wild. Rob a real guy. Yeah. He's, he's, a, he's a real, real guy. Yeah. I like Rob. He's, he's a good dude. He's yeah. funny, too. But he's, well, he's extremely you, talented. I'm telling you right now, yeah. if you can build the Tucker... That's what I was going to say. Anybody who's had a tucker in their shop, oh. that's... I, I'm like, hey, you're a real guy. You know, like, anybody can work on a Camaro. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not pointing fingers at myself, but trust me. <laughs> I mean, hillbillies work on Camaros. These are facts. Hell fire shit now. Yep. <laughs> right. so, we got a lot of good stuff coming up this year, though, I think, yeah. with... Uh, uh, I don't know why Tucker's made me think of a Frazier, the same off, oh, off the, the Kaiser. thing. Or the Kaiser, yeah. yeah. Kaiser mm-hmm. Frazier, yeah. But yeah, Matt Leland's been working on that, uh, on the... Uh, His... Uh, he's been working on the Manhattan Project. Yep. Yeah, the mm-hmm. Manhattan Project. I was going to say that, that y'all been putting it out on the YouTube channel quite yep. a bit. He's uh, what, got eight episodes out right now. Yeah, I think he's got yep. eight episodes right now. He's been recording some more stuff, like tying up loose ends and everything, taking it to shows and everything else, kind of taking a break from, because he's doing everything himself. Yeah. So he's working on the car, basically interviewing himself, <laughs> recording himself, <laughs> editing himself, and... <laughs> At one point, I think it was like, he's like, all right, here's some stuff. I need to like, just like sit down for a minute. You know, plus he's moving from Northern California to, to LA to, yeah, yeah like North, North Hollywood yeah, with his LA. buddy or whatever yeah. it is. And yeah, so he's doing that and everything else. So he's still been recording and everything. We got new episodes coming, I think, uh, next month, maybe or something. Maybe, I think yeah. is what he was saying and, and stuff. Then, and then. Um, and if you follow that, that build, that is, that's a no bullshit build. Especially for someone that's, he's the camera guy. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? And he's building a car, you know, and he's an artist. He, you know, like he, him and his, uh, his friend of mine, mine also, Chris Gomez, they build sets and they, you know, build a set and they'll build it around like a photo shoot with a pinup model of some sort. And then it's just like, it's insane. Like they'll build a whole like city and have a girl like stomping through it like Godzilla or whatever and take pictures of it. It's awesome. You know, like have you a, seen that? Yeah. He's, yeah, awesome. he's a great set dresser, but and he's he's really into cars, you know. It's like that's few and far between to find someone like um myself, I'm an artist, but I'm also a car guy, and then I, I can build, fabricate, weld, paint, all that stuff. And you know, we have this other talent that can do that and then do all the editing man fucking good for us we found matt at the right time <laughs> you know for for reasons, matt was just like i want to build this car i want to build something that nobody else really has i'm gonna take this four door i'm gonna turn it into a two door i'm gonna do all this custom work to it and everything else. i'm gonna do this that and it's just like all right and he like everything he's done yeah. he's he's done it he's himself done it, done he's, it. Yeah. he's you know if he needed help he's asked for it i know him and scratch have talked a few times and everything else and I think one of the plans later in the fall is possibly bring that car out here and chop it. Yeah. Because he keeps talking about wanting to chop it, but mm-hmm. it's like, you know, fabrication doing certain things is one thing. When you chop a car, you know, yeah. that's a whole other yeah. aspect. Whole different ball game. You know, yeah, yeah exactly. I would, I would so, love to chop that car with yeah. him, you know. And, and it'd be uh, great to bring it out here and do that. Maybe get know? Lane to come up here and get his, get his hands dirty for a change. Yeah, yeah for real. Because I know what I do is not dirty work. Look at those whatsoever. pretty little ants. Look at that. I mean, they're not even callous nice anymore. Nails. <laughs> so, <laughs> He's I, like, became, I don't want to talk about my ads anymore. I became uh, nails this weekend. What's that? Tina. Tina. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, you look so pretty for your for your boyfriend. <laughs> so I became an inspector at she work. She knows exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, she does. And yeah, I became an inspector at work, and now I don't work anymore. So uh, like, I, yeah, I need to get some weekends where I can get into the garage. How long have you been doing that? Uh, two years now. Yeah, because yeah. last time I saw you, you're like 
kind of kind of cut. Now you're kind of. Yeah, I sit in a I sit in a desk and inspect. <laughs> yeah, I'm, Sam was like, got the got the beer gut pushing out. And, I didn't man, say man, it. I'm not going to say didn't much. Say- I've been drinking way too much beer. I've lived here. <laughs> I've lived here for two years now, and I weigh more than I ever have. And uh, today, right now, I'm 50 years old. That's it. Yeah. So I've got to like. This is your birthday song. It's not very long. So I've got to. I got to get back on it. You know, like everybody so, gets that for their birthday. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Chuck. You're welcome. Uh, yeah. No, here, there, I need like to. Six a.m. this morning. I called about four thirty this morning. Oh my god! Oh, god. This is your birthday song. Gosh. <laughs> He's like, it damn it! My, it was on my Alexa. <laughs> you, you said it at the ringtone. <laughs> but uh, I definitely need to uh, to get some more opportunities into the shop. Uh, you know, the lot we we've been together three years in the new house, and yeah. I haven't I haven't even really been in the garage yeah. at the new house, like. Yeah. It cars used to be a, a big thing for me all right. the time. And, uh, you know, we went through a lot of stuff and, and tried to make things, you know, happen with the old brand. And then we brought in a new brand and, you know, we've done a lot of things with, uh, with media now. This is a better brand. And this yep. is a way better That's brand. Way better you know, brand. cause it's rod and style. Absolutely. Radio. What with you the always custom say, couple. You're always saying get wild. What is that? Stay wild. Stay wild. Stay wild. I love that. So, <laughs> so, Say it. Stay wild. <laughs> no, no, no. Do the, yeah, whole, the, whole, no, the whole thing. The whole bit. Go. And action. All right. Remember, folks. Stay wild. No. No, that's not it. I don't feel like rotten it's style. <laughs> is Rod and Style Stay Wild or something? What is it? You're oh. listening to Rod and Style Radio with the custom couple. And remember, stay wild. That's the that's the logo. Like, that's the T. How do you not remember that? All right. Oh, yeah. this yeah. pre-recorded? <laughs> action. 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 Do it. Action. <laughs> Mimic, mimic him, and I can't do it as good go. as him. She just did it. Just do it. She just did it. See, see, folks, this is a pre-recorded thing. <laughs> Say it, fucker. <laughs> You're listening to Rod and Style Radio, folks, and uh, remember, stay wild. There we go. <laughs> so good. That's right. How many times did you have to record that before you? He were did like, it That's once. It's, he did it's it once. It's so good. Well, so I did it good. once. Yeah, the, the intro that, that comes out. When I heard that, I called Chuck. I was like, did you hear that? That was fucking good. <laughs> I, was like, yeah, I was listening to his I, like, I like a good hook. You know, it's like, I ain't the best, but I'm better than you. It's a good hook. Yeah. You know what I mean? And stuff like that. So it's like. Oh, sure. When I, know, I, when I hear up? a good hook, I'm all about it. I'm like, yeah, you should totally do that. Let's do that. Like the car that we're, that we're building right now, the Blue Martian, was Zach. I'm like. We haven't talked about the Blue Martian yet. Oh, man. Sorry. So the Blue Martian is this car. <laughs> sorry. We're going to talk about it. <laughs> uh, sorry. I've been drinking. It's my birthday. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> I can talk about whatever I want. It's my birthday. All so, right, folks. You're going to hear the top secret. Right, right. I have to pay for sex on my birthday. <laughs> Awkward. No, it's it's uh, Jim Gaffigan, the comedian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. He's like, I have to do it on my. I have to do dishes on my birthday. I have to pay for sex on my birthday. I think that was the funniest part from that when he was just I like, don't. "I got to choose between food or sex." <laughs> you're going out to dinner. Just, you're I gonna come home with sex. <laughs> I'd be like, "Nope, bye." Um, <laughs> so our good buddy Zach, Zach Parks, right? Zach Parks, yes. yeah, Zach Wire Parks Customs. Yeah, yeah, y'all heard him on a uh, on our old podcast that the that the custom couple used to have. Yeah. Now we've. Joined forces with Rod and Style Radio and 100% part of the family. Everybody. So, uh, what are you doing on your couch? You're now part of Rod Style Radio. (laughs) So, Zach Parks is our good buddy that lives out there in Virginia. And he had found a car, a little hot rod truck uh, in a barn. And now he's building it out. It's called the Blue Martian. We only call it the Blue Martian because there is this thing painted on the cowl of the car. And I was like, oh, shit, that's awesome. It's like a little Martian. <laughs> and we're, like, talking back and forth about the naming of the truck. And I was like, we should just call it the Blue Martian. It's fucking, that's an awesome hook. We should do that. And But it's Zach's car, so we have to wait for his approval or whatever. It's like, I love it. Let's do it. You know, <laughs> like, let's do these things. And I was like, all right, well, I want to send you these parts. Chuck was like, I'm fucking all in. I got a nail head. I got this fucking other transmission. I got this intake. And I'm like, whoa, Chuck, uh, 
you just gave away like two of your cars just now. Like, <laughs> Don't I give a fuck. Let's do it. I love nail heads. <laughs> I, was, I was like, anybody want nail head? Yeah, nail head. Okay, good. And I'm just like, nail head. I get strung out like Tourette's, nail head Tourette's. You gotta listen. This is the intro that we did part. Oh, that's why. Did Rexon put this together? Yep, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, when well, we told Rexon, like, we're thinking 1960s, era you know, cartoonish, what he's like, all right, cool, here you go. Okay. Yeah. Still a rod style pistol. Yeah. That's too cool. Folks, y'all will be able to see that when we release everything. Uh, it should be the next couple of weeks. We got, we're trying to, uh, Chris Biscatelli did some artwork for us and stuff so we're trying to get that march together and everything and best blue martian boys like all right come on little folks no i can't do it no it has to be like an introduction of the blue martian like very nasally no i don't know it's like i don't i feel like helium would be involved no <laughs> no not at all i hate that sound <laughs> my, okay, then I definitely I feel like helium would be involved. No, it has to. It has to be like that, like '60s salesman pitch. You know, it's like, hey guys, you know, this is the Blue Martian. You know, oh, you're yeah. making a like a sales pitch voice, not a uh, yeah. Blue Martian voice. <laughs> no, no, not for the actual alien itself. Oh, that's what I was thinking. The actual thinking alien like, itself would be like a bunch of beeps or something. I just felt like so it was going to be Marvin thing. the Martian. I just had that voice stuck. That's one of them. I think that. that's where I was at mentally. Uh, yeah, yeah. Blue no, Martian. It has girl. to be the Blue Martian <laughs> self. <laughs> yeah, like, because it's like a 60s vibe car, you know? It'll be all metal flake and blue and with like a nail head and all that. A nail head? I heard nail, nail head. head. Yes. Yeah. What? It? I'm yeah, I know. Yeah. I was like about to be like, sir, what the fuck are you doing to yourself? Podcasting so is a full so, contact so sport. I am bleeding like crazy. Here we go. I'll take care of it later. Yeah, who uh, one episode with no, the custom that, couple and Chuck is bleeding. We didn't even touch him. That's kind of fucked up. <laughs> I was like, I'm itching. So uh, I want to know what y'all have going on. Like, Sammy, you have your little Buick now. Your little, uh, Buick? little things. My little, little Buick. Little Buick. <laughs> <laughs> It's the same year as my cars, so it's like it's the same. It's like it's twenty. You got the flashers yet? No. Is you so just walk around flashing? I just don't have brakes. <laughs> I don't have brake lights. lights. I don't yeah, have brake lights. lights. <laughs> well, just do it. You just put your hand out. That's literally what I do. I've got the hand signals now. We're fine. Killer. So there's a mechanism on the bottom of the steering column. That's what's wrong with it. Well, that's why it needs to come here. <laughs> so, and you're you're buying a new car pretty soon. You That's think? the plan. That yeah. is the plan. We made a deal on something uh, just a couple weeks ago, and we'll let the cat out of the bag. Every time I talk about a car, it, it doesn't happen. But That's what happened with the one in Oak. But we already we have here. the deal. Okay. But the deal it is here because we could always get. You could always get. We already car. have the deal. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely. The contract right. has been signed. <laughs> it's done. The contract. <laughs> yeah, we drew up something to say that we're gonna get it. It's because we can't get it right now. Oh, because okay. Well, we're then, literally all the all right, traveling. So let's quit saying it. What is it? Uh, be picking up a 1950 Mercury. Oh, nice! Yeah, yeah that's a that's a real car. Yeah, uh, it's definitely uh, better quality than a lot of things that I've owned in my life. Yeah. Uh, right up there with Sama's Buick. I think Sama's Buick was probably one of the best cars that we've ever made a deal on. That's my baby. And uh, this Mercury is, is it, like is right up there. Or top. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yep. I yeah, can't remember car. I love. I love that. I want to do like the cramps themed. Car, so I want it to be like it's gonna be called Lux after Lux Interior. So this is gonna look like fucking Christmas. No. It's red and green. No, God, no, no. That's what the cramps were all about. No, he liked pur- purple. Was actually his people, favorite color. People that were all about green that are just weird anyway. Green so he actually really color. liked purple. So <laughs> I was purple thinking, and green is good. Purple. And, that's that's what I was thinking. But I want to do. Um, Man, I, I wish wanna, we knew somebody could paint it. Duh, we have someone in this room. I'm not a good painter, though. <laughs> I don't know if you'd want me to paint your car. But no, I want to do one of the songs on the back of it. I want lettering, and I wanted to say, like, a bad girl should, because it's a woman-owned car. Song, yeah. 
So then, so I want to like kind of do like a almost kind of like a mix of a custom and a low rider kind of car, just because that's already bagged. I know it's not your taste, but it's my taste. <laughs> it is already bagged. Yeah. yeah. But what do you mean cut between? Well, for one question one after you paint it, are you going to sit on the hood and or trunk? Absolutely. Okay, good. Uh, question Fresh two. paint job and all. <laughs> question two. The hell do you mean between a low rider and a custom? Because that is not a thing. It is for me. A custom low rider? Okay. Pretty much. So let me explain some things. <laughs> Let's roll with it. Okay. So custom cars are actually still being built, right? In the 60s, all the way up to like probably like 67, 68, something like that. There's custom cars, but they're being they're so far fetched, like crazy amounts of body work and this and that. But in the late 50s, when cars were being customized, they weren't, well, paint was being customized. The car itself wasn't being customized, right? Mm -hmm. Like Larry Watson would take a brand new car that would be like gold or whatever, and then he would sand it all down and then put a candy paint job over it. Mm -hmm. But it would be all painted out already, peel the paint up, peel the tape off, so it'll be like, gold or whatever with like let's say red mm. a red fade on it but it'll be all panel painted right so that was considered a custom car at that time because mm -hmm. it was lowered it had hubcaps or whatever and then kind of later on in the in the mid 60s um that became more and more popular because you could just turn around on your car and you could have a, a unique custom car by just uh, shaving the deck lid or the hood or mm -hmm. whatever. And then you would put scallops over that area where the bodywork had been done or the headlights or whatever. And then you would just panel that area out. You understand? So you yeah. just do the bodywork and then you would just panel over that area with a stock paint job that was on there. And then you'd like, so it would be a two-tone two paint job. Low riding. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Low riding is a different, it means totally something different. The low riding does not mean custom car. Low rider means sitting in the car low. A lot of people do not know that. It means a low car sitting in the car low. That's what that means. Low riding. So it's, you that's can have whole, the 13 inch wheels and the right, small right. tires. Well, every all that diameter, everything gets you lower so or smaller. In East LA or whatever, they would have like, let's say they'd have a stock Chevy, but it'd be like on the ground as low as it could possibly go, the smallest wheels or whatever. And then they'd be like low riding mm -hmm. in the car with accessories all over the car. That's low riding. Mm -hmm. It's not custom. So, custom and low riding are two totally different things. A custom car is a car that is customized. A low rider is a car that is lowered in your lower in your low riding in the car. Yeah. So there's like I mean there is custom paint jobs too though. A yeah, they paint would, jobs but stuff, it would but be a stock car yeah. with don't, accessories on it. Yeah, low riders then never chopped. They're not the body itself is mm -hmm. not really ever modified, modified mm -hmm. until you, know, you look at something like the gypsy. Extremely Stock famous, car. yeah. You know, low rider. I mean, yeah. gorgeous car. Yeah, yeah. But if Won't you break. if you just took the paint off of it and put it back to stock height and put wheels back on it, it's a stock car. You Won't know, break. But, that. you know. But yeah, it, I mean, it's a gorgeous car and everything else. And then there's a lot of low ride, like low riders. I think uh, they go above and beyond for paint. accessorizing and yeah. paint and everything. Because I mean, like especially in Los Angeles, you see a lot of those guys. Or they're in, like chroming and engraving like mm -hmm. the rear ends yeah. right, right. and the right, right. control arms and stuff and just blows my mind. But that's still not a custom. Got it. Okay. So, yeah. Custom means like I mean, your car is being low. Yeah, your it's pretty is fucking, fucking low. low. <laughs> I've seen it. It's low. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's 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 fucking low. But. I mean, I've I've worked on two of the best, two of the most famous low riders in the world, like. Uh, Monte Carlo, and then they had like some wacky Nissan something, <laughs> but it was like both of those cars had won like lower out of the year, oh, and, shit. I've, and I've striped both of those cars. So, it, I mean, 
low riding doesn't necessarily mean custom, mm -hmm. you know, shaving and decking and chopping and all that other stuff. And if I could touch on another trend that's going off right now, it's like people will be like, oh, yeah, it's just a mild custom. And it'll be like stock headlights, stock grill, <laughs> stock bumpers, all this shit. And then they'll chop the car. Oh. That is not a fucking mild <laughs> custom at any sort whatsoever. Where that is go? like you got him going. That is, <laughs> hard, that is literally the <laughs> most fucking fabrication you can possibly do on a car cut at one car. time. It's cut the fucking roof off. The roof holds the car together. <laughs> oh, it's stock. It's a mild custom. You know what? You're an idiot. All right. I'm just gonna tell you, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> the very first thing that you would do in I'm the fifties. The very first thing you would do in the 50s is change the grill because that is the easiest thing you could do is just go over there and pull the grill out of the car and then go stick another grill in there. That's like you could do that on a Friday and like your parents wouldn't know and you could go cruise around and be like, oh, shit. Yeah, I get that Oldsmobile grill, my Ford or but, or change the wheels out to set a chrome chrome steel wheels or change. something or hubcaps right so i have a i have a friend this guy named john that was uh in that era you know he's an older guy and he would borrow his friends or he'd borrow his parents car mm -hmm. it was a 54 ford and he would go over to his buddy's house flip the shackles which would lower it three inches in the back <laughs> put finished skirts on it and his parents car was yellow and he had a he had soap that was the exact same color as the car, and he would wedge it in between the tail light lenses, or the the tail light bezel, yeah, and the and the headlight bezels, wedge it all in there, so it looked like it was French, Frenched in, yeah, yeah, right, wow, yeah, just yeah. so you could go cruising Friday so night, you could go cruising, put the finish skirts on there, <laughs> do that, and then flip the back the black back shackles. And everyone will be like, oh, shit, John, what's up, man? Like, <laughs> he's like, I got to go. I got to change the car back. He's like, yeah, it's my old, <laughs> yeah, I got this from my parents, man. I don't know, man. I don't know if I'm going to keep it or not. <laughs> and then the next morning, they'd be out there washing the shit out of his parents' car. <laughs> like, and his dad was like, oh, there's a lot of soft, a lot, a lot of like suds coming off of this thing today. <laughs> yeah, you know, dad, I just want to do the right thing. want to make sure it's nice and clean. <laughs> This guy, he, he, awesome guy. I can't remember his last name. Would right that be a mild habit. custom? That would be a mild custom. Yeah, French headlights, French tail lights, thinner skirts, and then lowered in the back. That is a super mild, mild custom. I'm getting the whole like yeah. look. I'm just well, basically, like, when it comes down to it, mild custom is not chopped, but there's other you know yeah, yeah, yeah. at least like three to it's four different things, things done. Yeah, lowered, yeah, you know. Yeah. I mean, cut well, the drip rail. Mild customs. I've, I've seen mild. Well, that's where I guess it kind of blurs. Like if you have a, an unchopped car that has uh, the GoPro likes to get his uh, two cents in on this one. Or right. just <laughs> it was like you guys are you guys are done talking. Yeah, um, <laughs> but like folks, the I've GoPro seen cars of guys say like, "Oh, this is a mild custom," but it's basically everything done, shaved, shaved deck, you know. No, all that stuff except for chopped and the crazy paint. That's that's a custom. That is yeah, a, to me, that's, that's a, a custom. Wild, that's a wild custom. Yeah, yeah. Because if you're if you're repainting an entire car, shaving everything and everything else, yeah. that I mean, you've done everything but chop. Yeah, you know? yeah. So that's a wild custom. You like, know, I might as well ask you since we're on this and and we've you know we've talked about it before. We talked about talking four door about Mercury it. is pretty cool. Four door Mercury is really cool. I, I dig um, it. We've talked about the fact that, you know, there is a difference that uh, spelling custom with a C or spelling custom with a K. Oh, Lord, here we go. Spelling custom with a C is just normal, like, people that don't know anything about, like, traditional custom cars. <laughs> like, a tradi like, traditional custom cars, like, you know, 50s and 60s era cars, or even 40s cars, like, Buster Guard style cars, you know, all that stuff was it was meant to be spelled with a K, then and that meant custom because custom with the K means traditional custom cards. That means that you're 
actually customizing a car. The the custom with the C is like the bro, like who's like raising his truck or he's got a Camaro and he's putting a hood scoop on it or whatever. Like the dude with the Lambo would say custom with a C. Like us, that's for us, man. Like the K, the custom with the K is for us. That's yeah. for the, the guys that are in the the era into traditional custom cars and hot rods. That other custom with a C just means like. That they bought it out of a catalog? Well, it would just be like Chad or something, you know? It's like, <laughs> we're, not, we're not hanging out with the dude at the bar. You know what I mean? Like, that's not the dude. That's not our guy. Like, that's that's not the, you know, it's different, you know? Just like if you walked into a bar and you're wearing, like, a Dallas Cowboys shirt, we all fucking know that you're really not that dude. Yeah. You know, like, because you're fucking, you're all fucking super tattooed and sleeped out. And, like, you're driving this other car and this and that. You're not out there with the, you know custom diesel pickup with right fender flares and all that other bullshit yeah years ago i worked at uh pet boys when pet boys was yeah. still open uh we don't have them anymore in san antonio i don't know if anywhere still has them uh since they all they all closed up shop uh but that was like one of the things was like uh, you go to pet boys and they have just aisles of yeah you know customs Nonsense non yeah nonsense that you could glue onto your car um custom accessories yeah <laughs> and, and like that every sticker adds 3.78 horsepower <laughs> to your car <laughs> <laughs> why do you think i have like 80 stickers on the back of my truck my truck is basically a drag truck it yeah. works for trailers too oh shit i don't know stickers on my trailer <laughs> It's uh it's a funny thing. It's like, but I think the guys that are in the scene and they understand what that what's going on. It's like what K and C means. The, the word custom, they know where they're coming from. Like scratch, scratch with the K means mm-hmm. custom. Like mm-hmm. that's why I chose to use a K. You know, so it would be a different part. So you would see the word and know, oh, this guy's into custom cars, mm-hmm. not eh. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, or low riders, low or low riders. You know, I did. Uh, I, uh, I worked on that show, Living the Low Life. I actually named that show, and um, hashtag, hashtag, and uh, no, it was a good show, and it taught a lot of people about low riders and where the industry is and where it's coming from, and like, uh, what is involved in building a low rider, and they covered all the different generations or, or, or styles of low riders, you know? And, you know, I think that that show, if anybody ever wants to know what a low rider is or where it came from, that is, that's a great show to watch yeah. because it'll tell you exactly where it comes from, you know? And when they were interviewing me, I was like, that shit means low riding yeah. in your seat. Not, <laughs> what was it? Uh, not the Haggerty. other thing. What? Who, who did somebody did a whole uh, documentary on the Gypsy Rose? Oh, I think it was uh, Haggerty. It was. Yeah. I think it was Haggerty. And then I there think was we a, watched that one. There was yeah. a lot of great information about low riders. So I got. I mean, I love low riders. I'm. A, I'm a big. I mean, I think low riders are are bitching cars. Uh, I think low riders have lost some of the uniqueness to it because now when you see a lot of lorries like they're all the same same wheels same everything else and it used to be a little you know, i i think so what ruined what ruined low riders is that people uh start putting low rider paint jobs on cars that are 50s style customs yeah and they start putting low rider paint jobs on those cars so it's nice, like yeah. a 70s 80s paint job on a 50s car they're like oh yeah look at my custom i'm like that is not a custom car that is a fucking low rider yeah oh wow you hurt my feelings i'm like i'm here for that <laughs> that's what scratch does you show up in fort worth he'll hurt your feelings yeah are you about to cry line i'm like that's fine <laughs> we're not we're not what about it. bombers bombers uh, the bombs the bombs 
bomb cars. I like bomb cars. You know, like I, you know what I like? I like a bomb truck. Big like fat fenders, Chevy. Yeah, I yeah. love, I love that shit. The, like, I love the little uh, the uh, carb fillers. I love all that shit, man. Like the Isn't that the Thunderbird head. Yeah, that? Sam's <laughs> Sam's Thunderbird had curb feelers. Oh on yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> I had yeah, a buddy that, that had a 53 Chevy that was a, a bomb. It had like a wine red paint job on it, um, a beautiful car. And it was funny because he would literally just, he would he would be driving and you just watch him. You he just keep going to the right, to the right. And he'd hear it. He'd like wait for it to ding, ding, ding. And he'd be like, all right, cool. And he'd just like, ding, 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 <laughs> ding. He just wanted to hear the curb feel it. Yeah. The curb. Yeah. So <laughs> curb feel, well, like I grew up in the 70s, you know, like curb feelers was thing that was still going on like yeah. on normal cars yeah you know it wasn't just like uh low riders or whatever and but i also grew up in an area that was predominantly black so like a low rider there was a different style mm -hmm. you know it was like uh spokes double white walls not necessarily lowered though mm -hmm. but it would have like a ton of accessories and stuff like that the carb feelers and a visor or whatever and i'm just like damn that car is bad you know it's like uh before what kind I, of cars was it though like it, in the 70s yeah in the 70s yeah i mean what kind of cars were they like just big big cars like delta 88s or 98s or whatever pontiac bonnevilles whatever kind of like up in the northeast in the 70s there was a lot of like a lot of those guys would take the cadillacs yeah, yeah. like a 70s cadillacs yeah. and turn them into like low rider mm -hmm. style right, right. so or some people would like pimp mobiles or right. whatever, I guess. Yeah, it's a pimp mobile. Right yeah. Like, so before I moved from LA back to Texas, I had a 74 Delta 88, which is a big fucking car. Yeah. And like, uh, the guy that lived uh, lived downstairs from me is like, damn, man, that reminds me of my brother's car or whatever. And I was like, yeah, man, this is a brother's car. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And he was like, he was like, yeah, you know, and like we cruise around Hollywood with that thing. And, I, and he was just like, man, where are you from? <laughs> I was like, I told him the story and he's like, yeah, man, that's why we get along. You understand me. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, man, like let's hang out. Like it's fucking dope. And then back of my car would be all like lowered, but the front of it would be still up, you know, and just white walls. And I, I didn't have any curb feelers or nothing on my car at the time, but it was dope. You know, it was cool. Like, if I had one of those cars right now, I'd still be doing that style and cruise stop six, you know? Like, it's dope. Yeah. yeah we it, just went down. Oh, remember, wonderful. Remember when we rabbit. began this podcast, we're like, hey, we're going to focus on stuff? We did not. We did not at all. I'm no, we, we've gone down some wonderful rabbit how long, holes. How long has it been? An hour? Yeah, of, yeah but an I mean, hour like, all the stuff's going to be glass. edited and pieced into different parts of podcasting, though. You don't have to put it all together at one time. Part 78. And the Scratch <laughs> explains the difference between a custom with a K, custom, custom with, with a C, C. Yeah. and tells Sama, no. Pretty no. much. <laughs> Episode 79, <laughs> Sam gets denied. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the deal. It's like you're trying to do like, you're trying to do a custom car, a traditional custom car, but you're also punk rock. That's yeah. the problem. Yep. Right. That, that is the problem, right? No, bear. I get that. And, uh, you know, I'm not, I don't have any problem with that, you know, because I'm fucking punk rock too. You know? Yeah. But you can't do lowrider shit and custom car shit. It just, it, it, it's just not going to work. In my mind, mm -hmm. it's just not working. If it's lowrider, it's lowrider. If it's custom car, it's custom car. But you could totally have a custom car and have that punk rock feel. You know, it's like Roger Merritt does it all the fucking time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. you can't get any more fucking punk rock than that. You know what I, I mean? mean? Those are facts. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can have a. Speaking of which, dude's fighting off cancer like you wouldn't believe and still touring. Like, yeah, he's a fucking badass. He's he's absolutely badass. badass. As you it's can hear. Whole conversation. <laughs> yeah, I'll trade. Oh, you already got it open. I already got it open. Yeah. Everybody's open. All right. Everybody. But uh, <laughs> you only have one nail right now? Yeah. Awkward. That's no, because all the other ones, I've been like. Is that your custom nail? <laughs> That's a roll rider nail. Oh, it's, my it's custom with the K. It can't be with the. It's well, pinky. it's not on the pinky. Pinkies would be with the with the C with the yeah with the C. Thumbs a K. The C for yeah. cocaine. Yeah, exactly. 
So on the back of your car, you could like just have the word creepy or something like that. And yeah. the weird like lettering that that uh, the the cramps had. Yeah. You know? Something like that. You know, it's like you don't have to like go too far and beyond. I you know that most cramps fucking albums were green and red. Yeah. That's why I was like, what's up, no. Christmas? Were they really? Yeah. Come on. I never noticed. Nice they purple. had they had a t- they had a tiger one. I was, I the was reason why the they had a tiger one. I forgot which one it was, but it was where that was Boys in the nineties I... when I was getting married. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> well, there was why one. Why where... bring that up on his birthday? <laughs> the tiger print one might have been look, mom, no head. No, that's no, no, with no. poison this ivy. Is a bad and time all. to say that I'm not really a cramps fan. I like the cramps. Wow. All right. Yeah. All right. It's fine. Wow. That's okay. Episode it's okay to be wrong. Episode 200. <laughs> okay. so I mean, like, but I mean, like, you also, these these guys have the cramps feel about them. You know, a little bit. That'd give me the cramps. Please do not wear spandex <laughs> ever. Oh my God, you can never wear your vinyl pants. <laughs> hold on. Oh, wow. Hold on. <clears throat> Line. Did you just give me fire? Did you do you own vinyl pants? Yeah, I do. Black vinyl, and then I wear a vinyl skirt, vinyl top, everything. That's real weird. I think Sam just got us fired. <laughs> <laughs> vinyl pants. That's, that's a little awkward. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's awkward turtle. <laughs> but uh, this is know. calm for him when yeah. he was in the into the phase of doing shows and being the front man. Oh yeah, these outfits were. Yeah, Crazy. we always forget that uh, Lane was part of a, a rock stardom. Yeah, it was fun. It was a good time. Yeah. Had by who were the folks singer, that remember right? it. He yeah. was the singer. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. She pictures. You should do some music. You look very manic. Not man. Manic is that the right word? Just Fucking crazy. I think you're just trying to say the, the word man a bunch of times too. <laughs> manish. You look manish. <laughs> no, you did not look like a man. <laughs> So do you? What, do I mean, you I had Dreadlocks when I was in a band. Uh, so. I play, I play a guitar a little bit, uh, but I never played it like in a band. Uh, so like, I played guitar enough to write music. <laughs> okay, so, kind of shit rhythm guy. Yeah, you know, like a lot of that just to be able to sit down and write songs. And uh, my like buddy Tristan or, or something. Yeah, yeah, my buddy Tristan. He was our guitar player. He is just phenomenal. Yeah, and he's still phenomenal. Still doing music. Uh, he would take everything that I would write rhythms for and just blow it out of the water completely make, make yeah actual music out of it yeah. exactly and then we had an upright player that could just like click the bass like you wouldn't believe so he was able to Final you know to, to you know just run laps with these guys and you know and then we had a drummer that was just you know yeah, wild it. all the way dance. but i mean yeah I, I do very well getting on a stage, putting a pair of sunglasses on and forgetting everybody's there. And I just yeah. become that front man. And yeah. like I said, like, the great thing about vinyl pants probably is like, if you spill <clears throat> your beer, it's not a big deal. Yeah. They it's just, just water. Well, yeah. You know, I mean, I used, right off. I wear jeans and shit. And then you spill your beer and then you smell like beer and then you get pulled exactly. over by the cops and you end up in jail for the night. And you try to explain to the cop that, Hey, you're not drunk. You just spilled your beer, but it never works out. No, no. I, yeah. I, thought I would know. I'm just saying. So, folks, Rod and Style Radio is always an education. So, <laughs> yeah. next time you go bar hopping, wear vinyl pants. <laughs> You'll get stopped like 18 million times. But Rod and Style Radio said it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> next thing we know, we'll be in those, we'll be on court TV. We'll be, yeah, attorneys. Yeah. Um, we could do better than Amber Heard's attorneys. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Facts. <laughs> Stop lying. Um, anyway, no, I'm excited about everything we're going on. Oh, something interesting. Uh, I'll just go ahead and announce it here. But uh, we're bringing Gnarly Magazine back. So Very did, cool. That's been I know that's been on social media a couple of times, but uh, COVID kind of killed Gnarly. Mm-hmm. But Johnny uh, has loved Gnarly. And I've always loved Gnarly Magazine. So we're going to come out with a. A bigger and better version of Gnarly. Oh, I don't know, better version, but a bigger version of Gnarly. Yeah. So 80 pages of great custom culture, both with K's. I like that. Um, and it's going to be uh, the magazine size is going to be like a, a life magazine. 
or an old life. Yeah. yeah where they're just a little bit larger. Yeah. There's going to be that standard oversized yeah. mag and everything. It's going to be great. So more like cars. That. That's awesome. Uh, Scratch is actually going to have uh, a section or uh, you're going to get a page or two in every every uh, magazine to do pinstriping tips, metal fab, whatever the case may be. Actually, yeah. Gerald will probably be in the comeback issue. Uh, nice. Richard Rollins is going to be in... Um, uh, because the comeback issue is going to be 16 because we already had, 15, we already had 15 issues before. Mm-hmm. So uh, Richard Rollins will be in 16 or 17. Uh, the comeback issue will come out in October. I think actually June 1st, uh, Gnarly's going to start having uh, pre-sales for subscriptions and all that stuff. So I don't know why I just randomly thought about that, but I'm excited about that. I like print magazines, you know, between Hussey, Speed and Culture you know gnarly and uh i think rotter's journal is getting their stuff back mm-hmm. in back in tune so uh, i just like print magazines so no, i have to form. say you know gnarly magazine uh for one when the custom couple was getting our start and we started doing some podcasts uh i reached out to uh nick that was doing the podcast for gnarly yeah nick ward yeah, yeah nick, nick ward. ward i reached out to him and and we did a swap cast yep. where we, you know, we recorded an episode together and no, ever since then, you know, gnarly had always been very supportive of everything we were doing. You know, uh, my buddy, Dennis, uh, menace. Yep. He, you know, he got me introduced Door to Zane two step. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I love that dude. That dude's awesome. He got me introduced to gnarly magazine way before I even was, you know, really doing any of this. And, yeah, that's just really cool to me. Like that, yeah. you know, y'all are bringing that back because that that's just absolutely rad. We we'll, we would love to, uh, you know, possibly be doing some advertisement stuff with that. Oh yeah, I think what we want to do, and I think uh, Scratch actually brought this up yesterday, is doing something cool. So because the custom culture, the great thing about something like Gnarly Magazine versus you know, Speed and Culture is very specific to period era correct cars and stuff like that. You know, we got Hussey Magazine. It's pinups and just kind of on the looter side of things. The great thing about looter, loot, more lewdish, ish, more lewd, more lewd. Um, but gnarly, you know, being custom culture, you can Ludicrous. almost, you know, you know, touch anything you really want to as far as <laughs> the car culture. To- Don't do that with hussy. I know. I was about to say, I was like, <laughs> hussy, you can't touch everything can't you touch like. Touch everything in the champagne, room, Jason. Folks. Edit that part out. I'll restart now. One, two, three, go. Uh, Ludicrous. <laughs> no, with, well, with gnarly, you can, you know, you can. Touch with well, gnarly <laughs> magazine, you can touch all the custom culture part of it. You with can feel the it. artist side of it, the builder side, the you know, just and even just owning a piece of it. It's mm-hmm. me and Scratch are talking because I have a rocking chair. You guys are going to see it at the house. It's made from a front end and front engine dragster. Oh shit! I got it off of Kobe. Uh, I didn't get it. Uh, Jen bought it for me uh, from Kobe uh, Church Magazine. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys remember? He owns a Van Gogh. Yeah. Yeah. So he had this. And it's actually a front end dragster. They cut it off and made it to a oh, rocking shit. chair. And we were talking about the other day. So our buddy Mike, uh, he's going to upholster it. A scratch is going to letter it for me. So we got the side panels, everything. It's like purple metal flake. But that's like something that, like, I take it to shows and people are like, what the hell is this? You know, and it blows people's minds. So I mean, scratch on is like, there's sh- cool shit like that that people own that that can also be part of gnarly. It's like, hey, yeah. look at this cool piece of history. Uh, or uh, anything else, really, you know, because there's sometimes little trinkets even that uh, people can own from the hot riding world or whatever it may be that you know most people never get to see. Right you now, like I, um, the thing about gnarl- gnarly is they're taking up a, a vacuum that is, you know, that needs to be like replaced. It's like custom culture void. There's there's a lot of things like artist, art, yep. cars, style, music, all the things that we're involved in on a daily, but most people don't even know anything about it. They're like, oh, what what you want was it rockabilly? What is that? What the fuck is that? Like, I don't understand. Like, oh, y'all look like a bunch of vampires. I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, where have you been? You know, I'm like, you know, like Johnny Cash, you've never heard of these people? Oh yeah, I guess so. I'm like, yeah, that's fucking rockabilly, man. Like, where have you been? And 
there's so many guys that have been out there, like we've been doing all this. Gene Vincent, you know, it's like he's he's a real like fucking rockabilly guy. Like a lot of people have heard those songs and didn't know who it was. Yeah. You know? Were you thinking of Vince Ray earlier? No, I was thinking of Gene Vincent. Oh, you were thinking of Gene Vincent. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, let's try there. Yeah. Final pass. Yeah. But, <laughs> but you know, there's there's so much artwork. Like I remember a long time ago, like in the '90s, late '90s, early 2000s. There was uh, either Street Rod, I think it was Street Runner magazine, and it was when uh, Von Dutch was still alive. So it was like early '90s or mid early '90s. Von Dutch was still alive, and it was Ed Roth, and it was like a, a Von Dutch like uh, magazine article, and it had Ed Roth. Uh, Robert Williams, Coop, uh, the Piz, like all these guys, all these like actual custom culture guys, you know, they're the ones that started all that stuff, you know? Mm. And I was like, wow, man, this is a fucking badass magazine. But it was just an article in Street Rotter. And then later on, you know, there was actual magazines about it, like Garage Magazine and stuff like that, uh, like Power Glide Magazine, which is overseas. But well, yeah, uh, traditional rock culture did a good job of, yeah. of having a lot of that art and stuff in there. Um, Burnout Magazine, which is a Japanese yes. magazine. Yeah, Burnout Magazine, Ash. great job. Yeah, yeah. Those little mini mags too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love those. You know, and it's like, damn it, man, that's gone. And then gnarly comes out, and I'm like, oh shit, I want to be a part of this. Hey. What's well, up? The first issue of Gnarly was like you. Bow Monster on the cover. Yeah. Or, like, mm. I had a, a thing, of, like a the cover was a Bow Monster art piece, you know, which is phenomenal. Yeah. He's the one that did the artwork for Bad Ideas. Yeah. yeah. Bow Monster's awesome. Uh, yeah. Bow Monster's a great dude. Yeah. Super yeah. nice guy, man. Like yeah. on it, on it, on it, on it. He's the nicest dude ever. He gave me uh, his, uh, I'll tell you that. Phone I, number? Well, I have his phone number. Um, but he gave he gave me his uh flat drawers. Uh, you know, the he's had them for like 30, 40 years in his house in California and he moved to Arizona oh, and he's yeah, like, yeah, I can't yeah, take yeah, these yeah. with me. Do you want them? So I showed up to his house and we drawers that keep all his artwork in. Yeah. It's a no flat, shit. like the big flat file drawers on yeah. this thing. Yeah. huge. Yeah. Yeah, he just get uh, he just gave it to me. Yeah. Man, he, him great. and his wife are just great people. It'd be great to have Bow Monster on here, it'd be great to have Keith Wiesner on here. It'd be great yeah. to have Coop on here. But yeah. Coop lives in Texas now. But I was going to say, like, Wiesner or Coop, either one, we would make the trip to Austin. To go Von sit Franco? Down. Von Franco in a heartbeat. Oh, Absolutely. Is Coop in Texas now? He's yeah. in Austin? Yeah. yeah. Oh, is he really? Yeah. Oh, okay. At least that's where he's making all of his posts from. Yeah. He's a real guy. <laughs> yeah, he lives out there. Maybe I don't pay that much. I just see his posts. I'm like, oh, yeah. make a devil lady yeah, playing yeah. with her uh, hoo hoo. <laughs> <laughs> Always a favorite. Uh, I don't see where he's posting it from. Always do, a favorite. I pay a lot of attention to Coop's uh, like uh, uh, vinyl records. His oh, music he's, collection. Yeah, he does, he's, oh, he's got yeah, a music. hell of a music yeah. collection. It's fantastic. Or you know, something that most people don't know. Coop is from Oklahoma. Are you sure Coop wants people to know that? Well, I would, li- you know, like <laughs> I'm, I'm proud of him from being like from there because he's like a normal redneck. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and he is a successful artist that escaped and it was like, Hey man, let's do this thing. Yeah. Like I'm in a high rides. Fuck all this other shit. Coop, if you're listening, give us a call. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. I'll, I'll, just, I'll, I'll get Bow Monster on. Uh, you know, I get Bow Monster out to you guys. Wiesner. Yeah. Wiesner is always a good conversation. Uh, is it? Cause Wiesner's kind of changed his uh, style a lot yeah, over the sure. years. He's doing a little bit you more know? women stuff, yeah. less car stuff. When we had Thurman on, Oh, uh, we did. We went to Thurman's house and yeah. sat down with him. And in his house, all of the artwork in his house is all Wiesner. Yep. That was oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a huge fan of, of cool. Keith Wiesner. I have one. Uh, I have one original painting from Wiesner. Oh, really? And yeah, and I, I love it. It's a little uh, a dragster. I, I so I was working with Wiesner on. He wanted, uh, or I was going to have him do. A t-shirt design for my car uh the desert queen and uh we meet him we're going back and forth and he was like listen man i really just don't want to do any more t-shirt designs i was like all right cool whatever i said can i buy an original painting off you or something he, i guess he happened to have one so i got that off of him some sketches he did for me for my car and bow monster actually ended up doing 
the shirt for my uh, my coupe or whatever. But uh, yeah, that's how I ended up getting one of the original paintings. It's like one of those little ones. I love that. I love having that one. And yeah. I, I had the original Bow Monster one from the Desert Queen. Very oh, cool. cool. Yeah. So, I, the GoPro still hates us, folks. Like, stop. <laughs> stop. Stop. Stop talking. I, I have some real dry, <laughs> like, sketch drawings from uh, Wiesner that uh, we traded. It was like some girl paintings or whatever. Yeah. Drawings or whatever. Yeah. What's funny is uh, uh, that was one of the stories that Thurman told us was that he got uh, a drawing from Wiesner and it was topless. Oh, nice. And he got in trouble for his being wife. Topless. His wife at the time did not like it, so he literally took the drawing and yeah, he drew it on. For drew him. clothes onto the girl for him, so he could have it. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> He's like, "Hold on, let me see this real quick." Well, I like about Wiesner's, like he he keeps finding his prints, and instead of uh, just being like, "Oh, here's another print," he'll be like, "Oh, here I've like he he adds on to the prints." Have you seen him doing that? Yes. A lot? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. that's cool. I think that's that's all because it makes it makes it a little bit different, you know. It's a it's a print, but it's also, uh, you know, custom with a K. With a K. Yeah. Um, you know, but I think my favorite art from artists though are the rough drawings, the rough sketches mm-hmm. and stuff. Because I have Keith, I, I got some of that stuff off of Keith because he was selling some of his rough yeah stuff at one point. And I, I hit him up with, "Hey man, can I get some of that stuff?" And he, he sent me a little box of it, and I got some of that stuff. His rough stuff I, and stuff. I just heard it three times in a row. <laughs> the drinking game begins. Chris, uh, <laughs> Chris, you know, Piscatelli, he's, he's sent me uh, some of his uh, rough drawings and things. And, <laughs> and I've stolen some stuff from scratch. He just doesn't know it yet. Um, so I've, I've stolen some, some things, but not junk. Rough shenanigans <laughs> you know what i would uh, like to do are, 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 like i love i just love that that <laughs> jesus i love you the love rough, rough drawings that show the aspect of the artist's mind prior to a completed project Woo! there you oh go. my god that hurts so bad <laughs> <laughs> sketch it was it, it was tough folks but we got it out it was of tough them. stuff it was tough so you know what I, I would like to do we can we can wrap this up so of course we can go and actually enjoy scratch the birthday and have a meal together but uh one thing i like to do is i like to throw things out into the universe and see what sticks uh so let's do that with who are some possible folks that we could get on the show this year man i i mean like i said those three guys for sure like Wiesner, um <clears throat> bow monster monster yep. um you know we artists are always good because they they're awkward and they hate being interviewed um so for gerald shout out right, <laughs> some mechanics of some sort you know like we have to man there's a guy that's a great fabricator he's up there in the north uh northeast Tony walls he's, oh yeah oh yeah he's a badass yeah. like, he's a real guy uh, I'd like to get an interview with him. I like um, to with Rob Ida too. Yeah, Rob Ida. Ida. Rob Ida's real. A lot of knowledge there and stuff. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. That. So I have a. I, I don't know this guy. I know this guy, but a, a, a guy that I know on the internet. He always has like great cars. Like uh, Nads is the dude that. Yeah. The, the name that he goes by but he has a harley earl cadillac which is a concept car or for harley earl and he has a bunch of other different like just weird customs and hot rods like he's very knowledgeable and he's on the east coast you know and then um man there's just there's it, I feel like because with the internet and what else we're doing in our life is that the custom culture is like coming more and more together mm-hmm. and we could just be like branching out to these people and, and just interviewing on them. And it's, it's pretty awesome. So, I mean, maybe we should like start dissecting it per state or something, you know? Right. Like, I don't yep. even know. Well, I think it's a good idea right like, there. If there's, if there's anybody out there listening, 
and it's like, hey, I just like to get on there and chat a bit. The great what about thing the, of the, the Meeks? The Meeks. Oh, Cedric and his dad. Oh, oh man. man. Or Cedric anybody from his strange car club. If you guys are listening, if you're not, then I'm upset with you, Robbie, Cedric, everybody else. Man, those guys are, they're always building badass cars, yeah. you know? Yeah, it's if like, you're not following the strange car club, like Mike Thompson's always got something cool going on. Yeah. Robbie's always got a cool wheelies or something. I mean, yeah. hell, he owns the Bonnie and Clyde drag car. You yeah. know, hell, the, the strange car club own the uh, orange crate. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah, shit. Yeah. That's yeah they're, and they're, they're good dudes. Every time I'm in Portland area or something, it doesn't, they'll do anything yeah. for anybody. They're just great dudes. But well, yeah, anybody listening, even if you want yeah. to jump on the podcast and, and chat about things, even if it's something that's not national, more regional and stuff like, right. you know, the, the Strange Car Club is kind mm-hmm. of a regional right. Portland thing. Right. And they run a show every, a drag race every year up in uh, Washington and Toodle. Right. I'd like to I'd like to get some real guys on here too that are like a little bit more like well known or whatever like Richard Rollins. He said he'd be interview he'd be interested in, in doing this and really lot, yeah, yeah like and Richard it's funny enough like a lot of people don't understand like where he comes from but it, like me and him went we're from East Fort Worth like you want to talk shit with that guy like he'll fucking race you right now like he doesn't care <laughs> like. <laughs> Where do you want to go? Where do you want to race? How much money <laughs> you got to go? Like, how much money do you have to like bet me to race you somewhere? You know, like he's he's a funny guy. Like he'll he doesn't care. Like he'll he'll just do it. You know, he's he's sitting on a a, a, a huge set of nuts or something. You know? like, <laughs> he does not care. You know, if he, if you're trying to be a fireman in your earlier years, you don't care. You know what I mean? Like. Mm. You, You've ever met a fireman that's not tough? I don't think so. So it's like, uh, you know, like he wants to do he wants to do the podcast. You know, like I'd like to get Chip on here. You know, that'd be awesome. Uh, there's a couple other guys. Yeah, uh, we'll get Mel on here from Trog. And yeah, we'll get Mel Trog. on here. That'd be awesome, man. Yeah, he's, absolutely, he's super funny. He's like, he's, I'm gonna make Johnny get on the podcast from Gnarly and Hussy yeah. at some point. He doesn't want to. It's too late. Trick Johnny, I've already got you onto it. How did you take this phone call, Johnny? Yeah. <laughs> An hour and a half later, we oh, recorded shit. all of this. It would, you know, there there's so many things that are down the pike, you know, it's like we want to do with you guys and like having you on shows and and like not necessarily just having a podcast, but also having a film and a microphone and doing the interviews right there, you know? Like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Or how are Cell style version of what we're, what we're doing now, you know, it's like there's a lot of opportunities available to do that, and people are missing it. And why don't we just take advantage of it? Absolutely, no, I I feel like you know we've got endless opportunity right now. Um, some of the most fun interviews that we have done before have been with you know all, all of the artists that we've had on. Uh, musicians, musicians always have crazy stories from the yeah. road and things that they've been involved with. Uh, like one of the one of our favorites was right when we got started, right off the bat, a friend of ours got the uh, Eddie from the Voodoo Glow Schools to jump on our podcast for oh, us, yeah. and he's supported us ever since. Like we right. became friends with him, and he's even shared Sama's pictures and tell people to go vote for her when yeah. she's trying to get into these pinup contests and. You know, uh, you know, music is a is a big part of this culture, and some of the the subculture music is like, you know, it's pretty wild to get into. So, yeah. you know, the that's a whole another realm of interviews that we could start having. Uh, and you know, personally, one of my heroes and favorite people, you know, to to possibly one day be able to talk to would be I'm, Steve. I'm right here. Oh. Steve oh, oh, yeah. Wait, okay. I thought it was me. Is, well, Chuck's already been on the show twice now. Steve so, Cab is awesome, man. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah, Steve Cab is is one of the reasons why, as a kid, I was on a skateboard. And, you know, I mean, it, he's a car dude. Yeah. And a bike dude. He's and a real guy. it's like, yeah. you know, people listening to this podcast, they would love to hear that. Yeah, oh, I know it. So yeah, we'll just throw even, it out there in the universe. Did you, did you see that art that Adam did for 
uh, Steve. Yes. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's oh, cool. That is so rad. So, Adam was three, another five, three. Adam, he did. Uh, uh, he does like wood cutouts, right? And paints yeah. and all this stuff. He did like uh, the you know that uh, that band truck that Steve has. He mm-hmm. made it look like a skateboard with like skateboard right. wheels and stuff. The wood right. cutout was really cool. And sent it to Steve. Yeah. But no, I think I think we got we got a lot of good stuff coming up this year. So anybody that's not already subscribed to Rod and Style TV or Rod and Style Radio and on your favorite podcast or you're fucking missing out. Yeah, fuck, you're missing out. And if <laughs> you know, and you're missing out on stuff and shit and stuff and, and things. things. You know, so if you're missing out on stuff and things, you just you have nothing to go. So and if this I was your think, first you know, episode that you heard, welcome to the shit it. show. <laughs> <laughs> this is your first episode. I'm sorry. There's, uh, I don't know, multiple beer cans sitting on the table. And uh, <laughs> one yeah, last thing I'll I'm throw hungry. out there now that we've <laughs> now that we've uh, come together and all of this and, and, you know, created something really rad. Uh, the custom couple had 49 episodes. And we call it quits and we're no longer doing our own podcast when we decided that we we're going to do uh, just podcast for Rod and Style Radio. But our producer, as wonderful as he is, is able to archive all those episodes onto Rod and Style's oh, sure. channel. Yep. So sure. folks that are just now finding this channel and haven't heard anything that we've done before, you'll be able to binge listen to a ton of podcasts with some really cool people but uh jason you, you rock yeah you're amazing I appreciate your brother yeah he's been doing just absolutely rad shit yeah. behind the scenes and you know he, he deserves all the shout outs in the world uh and everybody that you've ever hired named matt is doing a wonderful job for you <laughs> Just All right, so you know that. we need somebody not named Matt to hit us up. And, <laughs> and I feel like every time we meet somebody, it's like, oh, what's your name, Matt? You know what? Oh, I'm, I'm done with this. Yeah. <laughs> These are why I go by Lane. Um, <laughs> so all our listeners out there, if you are liking us on Apple, don't forget to leave a rating and review because we do look at every single one of them. We do post them. And you know what? Hopefully we keep our, you know, our stride strong and not have a negative review because we've yet to have one. Good. Yeah, we have never had uh, any negative ones. And right now, Rod and Style Radio is sitting at a 4.9 star rating out of five. So, I mean, that's that's pretty rad. Who rated us below five stars? Somebody put a four We're star Scott on there. So- Who? We, 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 we have no... We'll we have- tell Scott. Scott. <laughs> if you don't know gonna- Scott, don't worry about it. <laughs> but he's We're going to get to the bottom of this. <laughs> These are facts. That's good. But, uh, 4.9 is awesome. I, I dig it. Spotify, I appreciate what you guys are doing. Spotify has also uh, put in a rating system for us, and we're five stars on that. Nice. So, really, hundred awesome. percent. We're doing we're doing some killer work with uh, with everybody listening in and and giving us ratings. Thank you, uh, and always, people. You know, we follow our social media like we we are the ones behind it. We're, it's not somebody else running it. So send in some messages if you like what we're doing if you if you want to be on the show send up some messages as well uh let us know how we're doing stay wild